like the first gladiator like makes so much sense where it's like this is a revenge story right very simple it's, yes there's yes. some political like dressing and things like that but it is it is very just it's like pretty straightforward, straightforward. Yeah, yeah. this movie uh structurally also is very similar to the first film it's very structurally similar so much so that like i think if you hadn't seen the first movie, it would be mm. even more confusing. Kind you need to watch the first movie to understand yeah. those characters. Yeah, you would have yeah, just yeah. gone in and been like, why I'm... does this woman matter? <laughs> break room a big day for blue guys and big guys that's right it's headlines hit that graphic baby who's the blue guy we'll get into who the blue guy is it's part of the fun <laughs> don't get ahead of it we're gonna get into it <laughs> I the blue guy is. Th there's a few blue guys and probably a few big guys yeah so some we'll, blue guys yeah. some big guys they're all over the place mm -hmm. i'm brandon barrick joining me today we got jessica clemens uh harumph <laughs> harumph to you as harumph? well we also got Evan Yee. Um, a roof? A roof? <laughs> a roof. Woof. Evan's out of the producer box here at the desk today. Uh, we got lots to talk about. We're going to get into Gladiator 2 towards the back half of the show today. So if you clicked on the thumbnail and you, all you care about is Gladiator 2 and you're like, what are they talking about now? Don't worry about that. You can look at the little chapters below. Thanks, Brian. You can just skip to the Gladiator 2 part if you want. But you don't want to do that. You want to stick around and have a good conversation with us. Yeah, who are these blue guys? Who are these blue guys? You want to know who they are. We've, we've been teasing the big guys, teasing the blue guys. You want to know who they are. Uh, let's kick it off with some headlines, right? Yeah. Uh, we got a final trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. That's the blue guy we're talking about, of course. Oh, I'm an idiot. I was going through everybody in the in the uh, Gladiator 2. Like, I was I like, I didn't see any blue guys in Gladiator yeah. 2. I guess that monkey and then was I a little going, blue. Yeah, a little blue. Monkey was bluish, I don't know. Someone got blue Mad balls. Yeah, the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was also thinking of Wicked, and I was like, still no blue guys. I'm such an idiot. The monkeys were blue. The monkeys they were, blue. They were, they were hairless. Academy uniforms were they blue. They were right? blue in the yeah. Shiz Academy. Okay. Either way, this makes way more sense. Yeah, we got a new trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Uh, Jessica's working on a breakdown of it right now, uh, in between doing the break room with us. Mm. But let's take a look at the trailer first. Here we go. Quick, miss. You think this is just for the trailer? Oh. Well, there is a part in the like 2019 one or the movie where he goes, I'll be back for Christmas. Oh, and so probably, really? Think, that but could also, also be like a weird flashback. To or it could be a speed jump because he's like, I've never had a father. And he's like, let's uh, go through every holiday together. Uh, that's <laughs> a great. It's also a Jim Carrey yes. thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, this trailer is crazy compared to the first one because the first yeah. one really made it seem like Dr. Robotnik was on their side. Mm -hmm. They were going to fight together the whole movie. He gives him a little hair, then yeah. shakes his head, ba 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 ba. But this does totally reframe it as like <laughs> yeah. they're constantly enemies, which I think I like Mike. I like that more, right? Well, Shadow and uh, yeah, no, yeah, the Shadow three. and and Eggman, yeah. Robotnik against Sonic, like the main trio. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's really fun. I, I, yeah, it's so interesting because it's like, oh yeah, they can't be enemies again. We got that last time with Knuckles. So what are we gonna do this time? But eventually, Shadow's gonna have to turn around, or maybe not. But I do think. Mm, Maybe maybe he doesn't. There's parts in the trailer that I found things that I'm like, how would Shadow come back from this? Yeah. Because like every, it does feel like these movies, yeah, they introduce a new character yeah. and it's like a first of the villain and then they become the yeah. good guy. That's like a trope that happens a lot. But this could be, this could be a two parter where it's like Shadow's just completely bad and yeah. wait, they find Rogue. <laughs> like they find yeah. Rogue and they bring Rogue in or Amy. They bring Amy yeah. in. Because yeah, I imagine the franchise doesn't want to make all of the sonic substitutes bad guys right you want them all to be on the same team at some point yeah yeah and i mean there's a thing where like the movie could end with shadow not you know really breaking good or breaking good just like in the last like few minutes mm -hmm. but like yeah i think you know it would really feel like too formulaic and we're we're gonna talk a lot today about how you know sequels return like how right. much do they lean into like the the original uh, structure of uh movies so yeah this one feels really interesting i mean shadow is such a fan favorite character um, that it feels like if he wasn't incorporated more, that it would be tough, you know, like for the franchise to keep moving because people would be, oh, you killed off Shadow? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like I kill him, but I also don't want to see him be good. Yeah, that's So true. that's why I'm like, he's a bad boy. And I, I want to see him be bad with Rogue. Like, I don't want it, him to just be good all of a sudden. Right. And then Rogue yeah. shows up eventually and is like, I'm here, not with him, not, with him. <laughs> not, not yeah. with him. So that's why I'm like, I can see it being like a two or the next ep the next movie. He'll also still be bad. Yeah. Also, they uh, uh, is it Paramount? Is it Paramount? Mm -hmm. Paramount will take anything. Watch them do another series. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 
the Knuckle series, I did not like. I thought it was a little too ridiculous. Oh, the, the like, TV, the yeah, show they did on Yeah, they did, streaming. like, a little series, like, six episodes. It was ridiculous as hell. But still, those parts are incorporated into the franchise. So I'm like, they could just make another six-episode series. I mean, series. this franchise is fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you two are both very hyped for this movie. You're much more into the Sonic lore than yeah. I am. Like, I played... As a young man, played like the original Sonic games on the Sega mm -hmm. uh, Entertainment console, but you know, I certainly fell off when it became Galaxies and all these other characters came in mm -hmm. beyond like Knuckles and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, do you think the hype is there for this movie? Does it, do you feel like this is is still growing, or does it feel like this franchise is dying off? What do you, what do you think? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna die off like. I think that there will definitely be a very strong, passionate fan base that comes mm -hmm. out for this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, especially the draw of Shadow is going to be huge. It really just depends, like, what where this movie ends. So it's like, do we dive back into a more, like, you know, Sonic's world and, like, more a little bit more fantastical and, like, less Earth-based? Mm -hmm. Or do we continue this kind of, like, hybrid way they've been bringing in the humans? People, things keep coming to Earth. Yeah, And Sonic yeah. needs to be there to defend. Yeah. Yeah. It does feel like with the Transformers where it was like, oh, yeah, we'll combine the military and the Transformers and they work together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Problems. That's right. That's the algorithm they're actually following. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be, that's actually kind of funny. Another I, Paramount uh, franchise, right? Yeah, is, that's is the right. the Transformers Truly? stuff. Is this, yeah, this is Paramount. Yep. This is yeah. Paramount. I keep asking them. Is it also, is it, I thought it was Universal for a minute. No, it no. is Paramount. Yeah. Yeah, Paramount. And they're making their money with it. Uh, but I also think Paramount doesn't really need the money, right? Because... Uh, Everyone were the, needs the money. Well, I meant to say the, the top three were... Uh, top four was like Warcraft for video game uh, adaptations mm. was Warcraft, the Super Mario movie... Uh, Detective Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. Detective mm -hmm. Pikachu wasn't Paramount, right? It's technically Warner Brothers? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Warner Brothers. And then Universal got... Uh, that has Super Mario. Who's War mm. Warcraft was also, I think, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Okay, so Paramount does need this. Never mind. <laughs> they have yeah. the Ninja Turtle but franchise that, also, but that yeah. is yeah. that's another franchise that seems to stop and start. Which one? The Ninja Turtles. Like, oh like, yeah, that's Mayhem was true. very successful, and they they had a spinoff mm -hmm. series based on that. They're only uh, making more money. Yeah. yeah. And Warcraft. Sorry for clarification. Warcraft, the film is. Um, uh, Universal. Was Universal? Universal? Okay, so yeah. Universal is getting And then I think the Transformers thing was confusing because there's a Transformers ride at Universal. Mm. DreamWorks was distributing until 2009 mm -hmm. and then after that Paramount took over. Yeah. yeah. So obviously lots of, you know, these franchises getting passed around but it's nice when, you know, you can have one that's yeah. essentially for kids, right? right? Like this is like, okay, you know, we might do some other things with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles but like the Sonic, the Hedgehog franchise is like, how gritty and grounded is it going to get, right? It's at the end of the day, it's about it a hedgehog. Shadow's got a gun. gun. Shadow's got a gun. It's not a gun. It's a laser. They uh, fire <laughs> missiles because they can't. They cannot give him a like a little pistol, no. like a an eagle. What what is it? A bur a Beretta? Yeah. They can't yeah, give yeah, him yeah, a Beretta. Yeah. He's going to say tails. Put the barrel of this gun in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth right now. Open your mouth, tail. He's you like to like taste John the Wick lead? Coming around. <laughs> Yeah, John. It's the closest we're gonna get to like yeah. a child John Wick story oh though. Shadows. Yeah. On Shadows riding motorcycle. Right a motorcycle without a helmet. Yeah. No helmet. Ooh. True revenge story, right? And he's just like, you don't need a second tail. <gasps> it, is, it is a revenge They're story. Gonna call oh you my god. Tail. <laughs> That's so annoying. It is a revenge story. Is yeah. what was that make uh Knuckles story more like Luther for each <laughs> help? Yes. Uh, it's like words. more of the wire. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Knuckles' story is more like the wire. That's so crazy. It is. They literally yeah. just can't. Keanu Reeves is a great actor for it. The voice is amazing, mm -hmm. but it also is like, yeah, it's a revenge story. Yeah. Something yeah. he's really good at doing. At and I did want to kind of like, you were talking about the future of the franchise. Like, obviously, Keanu Reeves, big name draw for an animated sure. character. I was like, hey, can they keep him around? But they have Idris Elba voicing Knuckles, not only in the movie, but also in a, his own series. Yeah. So it does feel like, yeah, maybe so, they I can think it's keep easy him around. It's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy for you to just come in the booth, record all your lines and ones, and then be like, okay, I'm going to go. Uh, every actor talks about I mean, how yeah. they love doing animated yeah. things now. because Jim Carrey's it. doing double duty in this movie. Playing two parts. <laughs> James Martin on set being like, I was in jury duty. <laughs> I, was I used to be jury. a cyclo. Well, was he, wasn't, cyclo. he wasn't in the series, the Knuckles series, because I think of jury duty. It was oh, just yeah. Maddie that was in the series. That's funny. And yeah. I'm like, you know damn well, he came back like, I got an Emmy for playing myself. I got, I got nominated for an Emmy for being James Marsden. <laughs> Not Donut Lord. And this is, a, this is a, a franchise that fell on its face when it started with that Literally. weird yeah. trailer. With those with teeth. The weird with teeth. scary Sonic, yeah. yeah. Maybe, Someone... maybe a trick. 
Maybe that was the plan all along. So put all that money in that trailer and <laughs> redo it. Um, someone did a Photoshop shadow with that face, and it's <laughs> disgusting. It's filthy. Um, is it okay if I step away for like five minutes? Yeah, sure. You have to I know. Go this, check a video. They just oh, okay. they they just messaged me, but I just want right. to see the beginning of it, and then I'll come right back. All right. Should we talk about um, Stitch then while this happens? I would love to talk about Stitch. Okay. Uh, speaking of blue guys, <laughs> we got another blue guy to talk about. Okay. Uh, and that's a teaser for the live action Lilo and Stitch. Let's take a watch at that. Let's take a watch at that. Well, we'll take a look at it. Disgusting. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> now, Evan, you're the number one Stitch apologist. Defender, I'll say. Uh, and I am definitely one of the number one Stitch haters out there in the world. This was never, I never really enjoyed, I, the movie's fine. Mm -hmm. I never liked the character of Stitch. I find it very annoying. Sure. <laughs> I definitely, I don't like how it became so integrated in the park. Yeah, yeah. There was a time when I was living in Florida where like, Stitch took over Disney World and he was like everywhere and oh, he made the castle look, look ugly and it was just like a whole thing. <laughs> how do you make it look ugly? I, I think this was around the time they turned the castle into a cake, which I believe was not Stitch's fault. But I, I blame Stitch for it. <laughs> but they had like little Stitch statues everywhere. Yeah. And he was messing with everything in the park. I did like when the trailer for the original animated came out and there was like, they worked Stitch into other Disney movies. Yeah. Like they oh, were doing well, the right. like whole new world and Stitch yeah. showed up and rah, rah, rah. But I didn't, I never really appreciated the character. I will also say Stitch, as a Parks fan, Stitch takes up. 90% of the merch. If you, <laughs> if you love Stitch, there's always good Stitch merch for you. Uh -huh. If you're not a Stitch man, you're like, where's my other merch? Where's some of the other characters? Where's some of Robin Hood merch, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> where's some uh, Aurora merch? Yeah. Why does it always gotta be Stitch? Yeah, si Stitch stands Where's really some Scrooge right McDuck? Now. Stitch is like the equivalent of... Um, a of warm like, hug. Oh, I want to hug. when it comes to merch is like the equivalent of Jack Skellington. Like it's yeah. like I think there's a very it's big very fan big base credits. that yeah. like yeah. gets that. It, it's it is a very specific fan base though cuz it's like I remember being a little girl when that movie came out mm -hmm. and I never felt that close. Like I think I was the same we were the same age yeah. as her and I was still like I'm not this close to this character. <laughs> it's a demon. It's a monster. I love it. Thank you. It is a monster. I love I love I mean, the movie. Yeah, I, I love the movie. Oh. I I okay, I agree mm. with you. I definitely like if I was presented with this creature that like plopped down in front of me i'd be like oh my god i'm way too scared of this thing but yeah. i really love the movie so i obviously I love are you hyped for this movie yes i think so i haven't been a big fan of going out to see any of these disney like live action sure. remakes i don't think i've seen a single one of them in theaters actually mm -hmm. i've always caught them after animal. the fact yeah animal um, yeah but i am excited to see this because this one feels like it's going to translate super oddly, right? It maybe makes the most sense, right? Lilo and Stitch the movie itself kind of takes place in like a present day. Yes, So you're sure, not worried about yeah. making this kind of old French village or yeah. Agrabah or something like that. Everyone else is like pretty much a, a straightforward character mm -hmm. and Stitch is the fish out of water. Yes. A typical story of an alien trying to fit in, in yeah. like a, a, a new space. I think the character design is interesting. The fur looks very cute. I think it should yeah. be brighter blue. He looks very dull. Yeah. And maybe they're trying to make it look realistic, but it's like, he's an alien. I wonder if there was a Bible for the animated movie that was like, this is the exact shade, shade and of number yeah. of blue that he is. Yeah. And on animated in like, what, 2004? How yeah. did that movie come out? It, they probably, out. it maybe looked just like grosser on our TVs. <laughs> and yeah. now it's like just bright as hell. Well, it's also like now you, you're taking a character and you're putting it in a realistic 3D space and light mm. is hitting it. Like when you look at an animal, it's not one shade yeah. the whole way. Like the way light affects it, affects the way it looks. So they're doing all that effect on this animal. They're also animating all the fur yeah. and individual strands of fur, it, and they're all being affected by the light. And I think at the end of the day, it just looks a little dull. It yeah. sounds like it, it, make it pop. makes sense on paper, but it's probably the hardest thing for them to oh, totally. do. Oh, 100%. Like, I don't know why they would do that. Because it's not even just Stitch. Like, the rest of the aliens show up. Yeah. And that's going to be hard, too. It's like, at least those ones don't have fur. But I'm like, <laughs> you're still in Hawaii lighting this right. body. <laughs> like, that's yeah. going to be so hard. And then you're always lighting them with different people. Like, all the actors are different shades. And I'm like, this is great. You guys are just, uh, you're going to have a hard time doing this with a freaking alien mm -hmm. that has blue fur. Uh, Melpo Meno in the chat bringing up a really interesting point. Um, do we think that this is going to be a period piece for the early 2000s? Oh, that was oh. Most present yeah, yeah. Day, right? There's nothing in it though that was like, because she chose Elvis. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah, chose yeah. Elvis. Nothing in she... it that screams. Well, I mean, there's the record player. I mean, at that point, people yeah. were moving away from that already. I but... thought it was also because she was just like broke. 
It's also true. Because it was yeah. like, I only have as a record player, even yeah. though now they're expensive as hell. <laughs> Better than that. Um, that. It would be, I would love a, I would love a 2000s vibe. Uh, yes, I, I would love a 2000s, 2000s that's little That's 20 vibe. years ago now, so. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know. oh, I would love a little 2000s vibe. They might, they might go for that. Because uh, I think it kind of helps a lot in movies when they do that from a writing perspective because you're like, well, we're eliminating cell phones, right? Which a lot of problems yes, can be solved through problems. communication. That's true. Right? If you watch like older movies or even older TV shows, a lot of the funny circumstances they find themselves mm. in are because they cannot get in contact with the person they need to get in contact with. Oh, and that and would so make... when you move, remove cell phones from the equation, mm-hmm. now you have a kid who's able to go on wacky adventures without a parent being like, where the hell's my kid? Why well, are you answering the phone? It's not even that. At the beginning when she beats up that other little girl, they can't get a hold of Nani. Right. Yes, so it's like there's right. no phone. <laughs> there's no phone to yeah. like... So maybe they were set in the 2000s. Maybe. But my favorite my favorite part in Lilo and Stitch because I do this when I was a child when she goes to buy Stitch she's like no give me the money and then she's over the counter and yeah. she <laughs> to the bill and the woman takes it I was like this is my favorite scene I love this movie it's very sweet I'm very excited for you're this hyped movie. up yeah. for it you hyped I'm up very for excited it? I yeah. love Lilo and Stitch I'm in I'm excited to see how it's all gonna translate to the big screen okay. I oh. kind of like you know we saw the clip of him like wah, wah, wah. it does look dull but it's like let's let's see what it looks like you know Just always see him run around someone worked very with hard with the blasters I'm here for and this it. little <laughs> alien comes around and just oh, yeah. messes it up his drowning scene is gonna be the worst oh. to work on oh VFX oh. congratulations does the pink Girl, Angel, does she show up in the movie? Or no. is that from the TV show? That's from the, I think, I, the TV second movie. movie maybe, the TV yeah. show, she does appear, though. Okay. All of them appear in the second TV oh, show. I and if you play the video games, the you were making sandwiches as the big yellow one. Listen, I love that guy. He's got the yeah. same powers as Stitch, except all he wants to do is make sandwiches. Dream. I love Dream. What are Stitch's <laughs> powers? He's he can, tr- and he can make arms, arms come out. He has oh, arms. he can make more yeah. arms. He's, like, dexterous. He's strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. Because hmm, he's experiment six... Two six. Six. Six, yeah. two six, and then the yellow guy is six two five, six two seven. I can't remember their numbers. Yeah. I just I watched that show every. I had like really bad sleeping problems when I was a child, mm. and I'd watch it at like three a.m. before school every morning. <laughs> he would super dream yeah. on Disney, yeah. and I would be like <laughs> sitting there in bed watching. Shout, shout out to Jessica's teachers that had to put up with that. Oh energy. my god! Oh Tired what? Jessica what passing out? Passing speech. out in the middle of class? <laughs> god forbid! <laughs> and yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Apologies to those teachers, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Well, I'll give it a, a shot. Okay. Yeah. Just for you guys. You like it. Maybe you I'll love, love the singing. Stitch. You'll Maybe love I'll the music. Maybe I'll love Stitch after this. Who knows? 2025, year Stitch. That's what they're saying. <laughs> Is that what they're saying? Yeah. The seven year Stitch. <laughs> oh, now that I like that. That's good. That's good. Hey, folks. We recently had this company, Magic Mind, reach out to us and send us a little bit of product. Uh, these little green guys. Not to be confused Ooh. with the vials of green and wicked. The, the oh. movie. Uh, this magic mind happened to show up. We were having one of those days here at the break room. We're working really hard. We got a ton of work to do. And I needed a little boost. These give you a little energy. So I chugged one. And a few hours later, we reached out to them to get a formal sponsorship because they were great. Uh, and I wanted to make it part of my normal routine. Magic Mind is a mental performance shot that gets you focused mentally, clear, motivated, and productive while reducing stress. Plus, every bottle has 100% of your daily vitamin C and vitamin D. This says, host drinks magic mind. I'll do it. <laughs> Just because it told me to do it. Oh, that smells that good. green elixir. Ooh, that green elixir. It is, it's good. It tastes really good. Nice. It's all good. Mm. Magic Mind was created with a scientific advisory board of doctors and medical researchers and was in development for over a decade. There were hundreds of iterations on the formula, but thankfully you don't have to try hundreds of them because they did all the testing and the final product they have now, it works. The energy you get from Magic Mind isn't from caffeine, which can make you crash and mess with your sleep. It's from nootropics taken from mushroom, the legal kind, Evan, Get don't get too excited. Mushrooms that they grow in Florida, or <laughs> mushrooms grown in California. Don't worry, they're not these Florida mushrooms. These are oh, California lordy, mushrooms. Lordy, lordy. Uh, and they're backed by over 200 scientific studies. Uh, I've used Magic Mind a little bit. It's definitely made a difference in my energy and my focus. And I, I enjoy it. If you want to try Magic Mind for yourself, you can use our code. Go to magicmind.com slash thebreakroom and use code thebreakroom20 to get up to 48% off your first subscription for the next 10 days or 20% off for a one-time purchase. Ooh, good deal. Thanks again, Magic Mind, for sponsoring this video. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Dude, I'm so right focused now. 
focused. You don't even Locked know. in. Can I tell you one little side note? Please tell me focused. Side note. Our breakdown for Wicked is 49 minutes. Oh my god. Let's go! Oh my gosh. 49 minutes. Now you, you need a lot of focus to can, write that. There's yeah, a lot in I'm just saying right now. Yeah. There's so memory. much in there that you guys can sit down, excited, shut everybody. up, and listen to it. Uh, well, before we get into Gladiator 2, which I know you all want to talk about, yep. of course we got to talk about this shot from last week, a possible Young Avengers coming together. Let's take this picture. Okay. This is from a video that was shown on a cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say it like that? You didn't have to say it like if that. If you don't know, the, yeah, Disney has several that. cruise lines, <laughs> and a lot of them have worked into you. There's a dinner you go to yeah. where you're part of a, a Marvel adventure, and they, they filmed all these different things. There was a different one that involved like Ant-Man and the Wasp, and mm. also uh, Captain America Sam Wilson was there, and uh, Miss Marvel was there. And like while you're in the dining room, the boat gets shrunk down so you don't notice because you're in the dining room. Ah, uh, yes. You get shrunk down. Yeah. You get made big again. Back up. But they, they shoot all these little things that they only show on the boats. Mm -hmm. They're part of like the larger Avengers campus story or whatever. Uh, <laughs> this one featured America Chavez, Cassie Lang, and Riri, Riri Williams all hanging out on the boat. Though you don't get the meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is from the Disney Treasure uh, Cruise. Uh, and this was taken from the Worlds of Marvel restaurant. And they are introduced as, quote, the youngest heroes. Sorry, Toussaint, you're not a hero yet, I guess. Because you would be younger. <laughs> or than even Ms. Marvel. Or they even didn't Ms. Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. They're like, get out of here. They only took the ones that were free. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, when would they have shot this? Like, I when think did even they... looking at that, Can you I don't think they're up? all three together in the same room. No, it doesn't. It, a, it definitely does not look like they're all three in the same room together. You, yeah. Cassie Lang is not there. She's not there. That was taken behind the scenes yeah. on. Because uh, she's, yeah, the she's third definitely one. in her, like, yeah. Quantum Mania outfit. But the ponytail on uh, America Chavez is so much longer than it doesn't I think look like it the is. movie. Right? It does not look like yeah. the movie. That looks but like fresh. And she's also free a lot of the time. So she, I think, is down to come in. She's free a lot of the time. I saw her at the. Where did we go we were at the she premiere was on dancing or something with the stars. yeah but she after was this, no i know and she's been free after it we were at a premiere of something and she was there oh, yeah, and i was just sitting we... next to her we were sitting right next to yeah, her yeah that's right oh um, my god and what i remember being like yeah she she's the was only one uh, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Was like, <laughs> yeah. She, but, she was there. She said part two. Hey, she was like, she was like, that was all Francis Ford Coppola. He came up with part one, part oh two. You better thank him. But at the beginning, um, all of them will show up to those premieres all the time yeah. to make sure they're like, hey, just so you know, Feige, like I'm also here. Yeah. I'm here to support y'all. They all kind of uh, stop doing it. Do you remember her. when Riri Williams was in that outfit that she's wearing in that? Can you go back to you it? it again? Isn't that? Didn't she wear that outfit in? Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I would not be surprised if they shot this shit behind the scenes. Right. They were yeah. like, because that would, this is a big marketing thing. So it, it yeah. makes sense for them to be like, hey, yeah. can you also just do a pickup shot really quick? Get her True. two chambers, ta two chairs to sit at really yeah. quick. Yeah. Now, yeah. ever since they started introducing kind of this like next generation of heroes, right? We've all been speculating like, when are they going to do Young Avengers? Mm -hmm. When's it going to come? Do we think this is some type of confirmation of Young Avengers? <sighs> yeah. I, I still think, here's what I'll tell you. I still think they would never call it Young Avengers. Right. Because that's a dangerous name to call yes. it. Yes. Because you can't keep these people young enough for long They are enough. rapidly aging. Right, right. Every year, they get a year older. Yeah. It's crazy. Isn't that weird how time works? Yeah. Like Amon Valani. Tell Christopher. But once you're in your like twenties, right? you kind of stay for a minute if you look like that. Like so Joe Locke's gonna. Yeah. Baby. Oh god. <laughs> Joe Locke is gonna look like that until he's twenty six. That's oh, that's that true. No, he's only 21. Yeah, he's so it's like right five years. years? Hey, he you got be, five years. Hey, tell that to Blade. How long did it take him to make a Blade movie? Hey, Black don't crack, so he'll, he's always going to look the same. <laughs> he's always going to look the same. Marcella is always going to... He still looks the same from the first movie I've seen that man. That's in. true. He does look the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I wonder... I, I, I think you're right. I don't think they're going to call it Young Avengers. There's a lot of rumors, too, going around about this. I find them all too hard to like believe or like right. too far away from this even happening. Uh, but one of the most popular things is that it would be done as a series and not a movie, which feels right only in the sense that like, I think Marvel knows they don't want to like, you know, kind of blow the movie load, so to right. speak. Like they've already got the like uh, next couple of years planned out. And like, obviously there's some empty slots if they want to do three movies a year, but feels like they got to see how next year goes before they would like, we're gonna bet on a big movie. And it feels or, like yeah. the, with a uh, series might be better. Sorry. I was gonna say, it might also just come through in Doomsday. They That's might, true. because we yeah. have so many teams coming with the West Coast Avengers probably teaming up after Wonder Man that it's like, oh, we also have the West Coast Avengers, we have the normal Avengers, we have the Thunderbolts, and now we have the Young Avengers. Yes. We can't give them all series, we can't give them all movies. Yeah. So why don't they just do that cameo as a team? together in uh, Doomsday. Especially when we have like a very disparate Avengers, you know? Yeah. We still yes, don't know exactly. who the Avengers are. They don't have Avengers Tower anymore. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the government's, you know, uh, always trying to get Sam Wilson to be a, a government employee. And he's yeah. like, no, I don't want to <laughs> do this. It, like, relies too heavily on, like, one person. Because if it is Miss Marvel that's making that team up, because yeah. let's not forget that, like, post credit scene was meant to be like, oh, Young Avengers, here she is with Kate Bishop. I'm like, she hasn't made any notice to get a hold of, like, uh, Joe Locke or yes, any of the other 100%. young ones. How would she even find them? Is she even looking anymore? Yeah. We don't know. We got these three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these three hanging it would, out. It would be interesting if, if, like, Avengers Doomsday is doing, like, either setting up Battle World or dealing yeah. with incursions. Mm -hmm. And the result of that movie is that a large section of heroes are unavailable. And it's up oh, to like it's... the younger people who are around to try and. He just didn't take the kids. Yeah, he's like, I, I, these kids are not powerful. I'm not scared honestly, of these children. Honestly, yeah. that would make sense. Oh, maybe only grab like uh, uh, Joe Locke's character from yeah. Agatha, and then the rest you. Can I mean, remember. those three there are pretty powerful, right? You have America yeah. Chavez who can yeah. bust holes in the multiverse. You have Riri Williams who has insane technology. Mm -hmm. But once you, you rip have Cassie Lang who's got the the pin particles. But once yeah. you rip that technology out of both of them, they're like, I can break your legs. <laughs> that's my whole thing about Secret Wars I'm like if you're just a regular regular human even with hu superhuman strength we can just break your legs like, yeah. I, do, you think, do you think Doctor Doom will break a child's legs in the movie? yeah That'd be pretty Doctor Doom would yeah, Doctor Doom would. absolutely put it on the prediction variant. board right absolutely. now calling it right here November 25th 2024 <laughs> Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom will a break leg. a child. I don't think. Leg. I don't think he's gonna break a child we, in the movie. But in real, in the comic, absolutely. Doctor Doom would not give two fucks about Cassie Lane. He would break her leg. Well, can we zoom out and say any of the the young Avengers? Any of their any, legs. Any of their legs. One of their legs. Or up yeah. I'm gonna say no, but I will say he'll break the arm of someone else. He'll break the arm of like Monica Rambeau. Oh, <laughs> oh, he breaks the arm of uh, Miss Marvel. That'd be yeah. that'd be torturous if he breaks oh, a Marvel arm. If he did it to like yeah. Scarlet Witch, that would really piss off the fans. Oh, well if she would just go like, Witch. and bring it back together. <laughs> yeah, she would, <laughs> she's like, where's a mirror? Let me go into the mirror real Wait, fast. is my arm backwards? Is my elbow <laughs> this way? <laughs> she's like, someone pop it back in. Just that's, yeah. that's so funny though. And the thing is, I know that still matters even though it was on like a cruise ship for yeah. Marvel excursions or whatever. Now. It matters because they, they know what they're doing and they know what their fan base is like. And so they wouldn't put this out there without us being aware of it. Yeah. That's why the whole like Ant-Man going in the butt is like, yeah, that's kind of funny. Exactly. They're, everyone, all the fans are talking about it. So they know what they're doing putting that together yeah. and allowing that to be. It could have just easily been like Bucky talking to a camera. That's it could have been Sam Wilson again yeah. talking yeah. to a camera. Someone Instead, that we know that they've had more like on set recently, mm -hmm. right? right? Yeah. But there's a reason they chose those three. Because that's why I'm like, why didn't they put... Kate Bishop or Ms. Marvel. Yeah. Man. Like, and the thing is, I know that uh, Haley Steinfeld's busy 24 goddamn seven all the yeah, time yeah, now. Yeah. But I'm like, I haven't seen him on Volani. You could have hit her up, and I would have yeah. loved to see that. Yeah. Right. She yeah, was in the last. Keep them separate. I would say she was in like the last Disney Cruise mm. adventure thing. Oh, was she? Did. Mm. Yeah, she was one of the ones helping like Sam Wilson and. Oh, uh, my little Aunt baby. Wasp. Good for her. Like, she was involved in that video, and I, I know when that video came out, everyone was like. Is she an Avenger now? Like, what's yeah. happening? Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, she is. Yes, she yes. is. Yes, she, she will is. be. It would be She'll really be. wild if uh, they reference that in the movies. They'll be like, remember when we yeah. all did that cruise together? Remember when we saved that they cruise ship full of people? And everyone <laughs> eating dinner helped us? <laughs> I think it's such a minuscule scale of what those writers know. Like, yeah. not, not to be that person, I only know because we're talking about it right here. Right. If I was writing for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'd be like, they showed up on a cruise. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Yeah, they better Carnival? add this to the wiki fandom. Yeah. Like, oh, like yeah. part of their page. <laughs> remember? Remember it. in, uh, was it the Marvels? The guy, the, I don't want to put this guy on blast again. <laughs> on the Marvels, the database that showed everything about uh, Kamala Khan oh, yeah, was yeah. Just, just copied and pasted from the, from the it fandom. Said yeah, bad. that poor man. That Wolf. poor man. I feel so bad for he people in those jobs. Those people in those jobs, you. I'm like, you'll never get away with it when we exist. Yeah. When we are looking at every corner, <laughs> every can't angle. Be lazy. Mm, you guys can't be. You can't slip up. Um, I just want to shout out some people in the chat who are throwing out some fun theories. Kobe Wan Kenobi saying, I still think they're gonna make a Young Avengers like a sub team in the next Avengers movie similar yeah, to what we're saying yeah. like how we're following the folks on earth and on titan and infinity war i like that would be funny to see like the relationship between peter uh tom holland's <laughs> peter parker and the rest of them right if he's just like sorry kids next time <laughs> they're like we're the same ages that would be no that <laughs> would i got the mask on i think yeah, yeah, yeah. bishop might be like a year older than him right she's like uh, 25. Uh, oh, yeah yeah because in 2012 when the battles happened i don't know how old she's no, been yeah. but that's a good point like it would be great if like Spider-Man tries to be like, they all look up to Spider-Man. Look at your kids. Yeah. And it's like, hey, once, kids. once that mask comes off, she's yeah, like, yeah. I'm older than you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weren't you in my high school? Wait, uh, yeah. Wait, yeah. I don't know who you are. 
<laughs> Ryan Painter says, I think Marvel's holding space for the Young Avengers. Mm. Yes, mm. very true. We get it. We, we get all it. were on the internet we this were. weekend. <laughs> we get it. Um, let's see. Uh, where is Scar on this cruise? SGSU Eagle. <laughs> we have Scar. Scar. They, they're they not acknowledging Scar's that. Scar's like, Dad, can I go yeah. on the cruise ship? No, son, you can't go on the cruise ship yet. You, you don't know how we do things on Earth yet. That yeah. sounds like freaking uh, uh, Rocky. Oh, That's, yeah. Hulk's taking a lot of hits. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Arguably, you're right. Arguably, He's taking a lot right. of hits to the dome. And then uh, last one from HBAS is saying, maybe they try to release it in between movies, and they're the ones who defeat Doom because it's something in the first movie. I don't know. Yeah. I think that if they do, like... <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah. They, if they do, like, kind of sneak the movie in, it does feel like something... In between. In between that we've talked yeah. about, like, in Ahsoka, where it's, like, on... Uh, when the crew in Ahsoka make it to Verdia, like all these events happening so far away, right? If America, if there was some reason for America Chavez to like punch them through the multiverse, yeah. they all have this like oh, little yeah. formative moment outside of the main events and they come back and they're like, wait, our home's all messed up. Oh, we've been encouraged. You know what can gone. happen? You know what can happen? America Chavez, who is very confident in her powers now could slip up and then she's in hell and she's like, oh. wait, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and then the Mephisto's there. And then that's when you bring in Mephisto. Oh, there you yeah. go. Meet him in hell, hell one. Is Meet hell one the one hell. that has one L? There's too yeah. many versions of He's different like, L's. I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you uh, meddling, meddling young, young Avengers. <laughs> What are this? Some sort of young They're like, Avengers? Now, how do we get out of hell? <laughs> how do we get out of here? Ridiculous. Well, you're welcome, Kevin Feige. We solved it for you. We solved it. We solved it. Perfect. Um, all right, so we're about to talk about Gladiator 2, but we also want to thank one of our other sponsors this week, Via, makers of premium federally, federally legal cannabis products. This holiday season, unwind and recharge with Via. Mm. Whether you're enjoying a quiet evening at home or embracing the festive cheer, Vias premium, premium THC and THC free gummies will help you find your perfect holiday balance. I, for one, am looking forward to treating myself to an Elevate gummy on Thanksgiving and burrowing into a bowl of stuffing. There is nothing I like more than burrowing into stuffing. Is that stuffing that was made inside the bird? This is controversial. We cannot get into this. Okay. All of Vias products are grown indoors in state-of-the-art facilities and harvested at peak THCA levels to emphasize the natural aroma and flavor. They add strains to their selection every week, so there's always something new to check out. Vias has THC and THC-free gummies, vapes, topicals, and drops, all of which are crafted with the highest quality hemp source from trusted, independently-owned American farms. Plus, get this, plus... Via legally ships to nearly all states in the U.S. in discreet packaging directly to your door with a worry-free guarantee. No medical card required what? this holiday season. Gift yourself some peace of mind if you're 21 and over. Check out the link to Via in our description for a limited time during the holidays. Via is offering 25% off site-wide plus up to 50% off select items and bundles. If you're hearing this ad post-sale, you can still save by using code BREAKROOM for 25% off. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Tell them the break room. Yeah. And tell them we sent you this holiday season. Enhance your everyday with Vaya. Thank you, Vaya. And of course, you know, if feeling mellow is not what you're looking for, hey, try One Shot Energy. Oh, heck yeah. Nice. Beautiful. I took Here, these products out for and now they're on the table. There you go. Now they're Bam. on the table. Done deal. Um, Done you deal. know, One Shot, One Shot Energy. Choose our healthy and convenient uh, energy boosting supplement for candy, uh, candy for everybody. They make focus chews. Focus chew. They make energy chews. Energy chews. And of course, the voice drops. For when your voice needs a little TLC. This, this was a voice drop. Oh no, I got him. I keep the, I always chew. click this one. To, click this one. I always pick this one up, thinking it's the voice drop. Energy one. chew. There it is. <laughs> British. They come in all these new flavors. Oh my. Oh my God. Oh, Lord. Uh, um, Lord. Obviously, you know. <laughs> one shot energy helps with focus, um, with energy, with uh, treating your voice, depending on which one you pick. They all taste great. Try them today. Go to oneshotenergy.com slash new rockstars for 10% off. Of course, thank you, One Shot Energy, for sponsoring this video. All right. Perfect. Are you not entertained? Whoa, is it By time? They don't even Gladiator say it in the two. They don't even they say, say it. What is it? They didn't say entertained. He says, are you not, uh, oh my God, it's a different word. It's like yeah, a, yeah. Uh, amused or something. He's, and he yeah. doesn't say, are you not amused? He's like, you're amused by this? This is not what Rome is. Paul, nah, Mescal, that, yes, Paul Mescal. My favorite part about this movie, I'll say really quick before I go into it. <laughs> okay. Is Paul Mescal and Pedro's like lower octave voice? Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes Like yes. Paul Mescal was like, wait, that's not the guy from Normal People. <laughs> like, yeah, they both nice so deep voices. Low. Yeah, so yeah. low. Oh, and man. then Denzel was just like, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Denzel said, like, what's up? We didn't get an Are You Not Entertained. We didn't get 
uh, in the first one when Joaquin Phoenix was like, am I not merciful? And then he's like, am I not merciful? But they did say merciful a lot. They, they said keywords. They said merciful yeah. a lot and they said different ver keywords. thesaurus of uh, entertain. The, at the and end, they were all they like, say... remember my favorite quote? What we do in life echoes in eternity. Did they say the other? I don't know if that is what they said. <laughs> Three people said it. In that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did they yeah. say the other? The, then we'll get into it after I confirm the quotes that were said in this movie. <laughs> did they say the like? It's not my time yet. You know how they said. Oh. Like, did he say that? I don't think he said that. I think we just saw Russell no. Crowe's little he's, chunk. Yeah, because he's like, where? Oh yeah, mix they it did up. say like, who will yeah. meet you in the afterlife? Yeah. So they had every opportunity to say the most quoted parts. They stole the same plot from the first movie. Yep. And they still had the opportunity to use the other quotes and they didn't. Is it stealing when it's your movie? <laughs> no, 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 sorry. <laughs> they reuse. They brought I back reuse. some of the same writers. Two of the same writers. And they had, like, Ridley Scott writer. stole from himself. <laughs> yeah, he was like, all right, you can copy the draft. Just don't make it look so just obvious. Look He's handing it to himself in the it's mirror. It's the same taking thing. It back. He just doesn't say, are you entertained? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Gladiator 2. Yes, this is the sequel to the 2000 uh, film Gladiator. Best Russell Picture Crow. winner. Best Picture winner, yes. Um, this movie, obviously, uh, is also directed by Ridley Scott, starring Pedro Pascal, Paul Mescal. Um, Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Connie Nielsen. Joseph, Joseph Quinn. Nielsen, Joseph Quinn. Uh, Fred uh, Heckinger, uh, who will be chameleon, and he really disguises himself. Yeah, what a in chameleon this in this movie! Um, yeah, so uh, as we've already uh, <laughs> said, some of our thoughts about the movie. So a really interesting uh, sequel yes. to a film. I um, wish they they could have easily, and I don't know if it would have made it better in my opinion. But just by, I hated that they called it the sequel. Because I'm like, this could have been wiped completely. Like, I don't want it to be a sequel. I wish they would have yeah. just called it well, a redoing. Well, a redoing or just a different. Yeah. I guess I didn't read a ton about the plot going into this movie. Same. And I thought it was just like, oh, it's later. It takes place after the events of the first Gladiator. Yes. At some point in history. Uh, and it's just a story of another Gladiator and how they came up. I guess it was explained in the synopsis that it was Lucius. Yeah was coming back and that was like a total surprise to me yeah. and I was like oh this is like way more tied to the yeah. first movie than I thought yes because even though this movie is taking coming out 24 years after the first mm -hmm. it's only, it only takes place 16 years after yeah 16 the years first movie. yes exactly because Marcus Aurelius died 16 years before that's well, what it said yeah. in the very yeah. long Prologue. Well, arguably, that's the only part of the synopsis. Like, that's the only part is like, oh, that son comes back. Which, I mean, yes, is the entire well, plot. Well, Nielsen's but, character, Lucilla, is but, like a huge part I'm of like, the But I'm saying if you just didn't do that, then none of that part would sure. exist. Yeah. And we, they didn't need to. I would have probably liked it more if this was what we thought it was, mm -hmm. or if it was just the gladiator reimagined. Right. Uh, yeah. And I guess the other big change is... You know, in the first movie, Maximus is a Roman soldier mm -hmm. who is mistaken for a prisoner of war. Yes. Brought in, and then it's revealed that, like, oh, this is a guy we all know. <laughs> He's part of the family. Yeah. Take off that he mask. He definitely banged Lucilla at least once. At least once. At least once. Now confirmed. Uh, now confirmed. Yeah. Which I didn't pick up on that in the first movie. No. Evan hadn't seen the first so movie. So I hadn't seen the first movie. I watched it for the first time Friday, and two I, days. Before. After I saw Gladiator 2, I was like, Evan, you need to watch the first movie. I don't know if you know this, but it's I, important. I watched it two days before I watched Glad Gladiator 2. Uh, what was interesting is when I was reading the Wikipedia synopsis over again, it says in the synopsis, it was like, it is heavily implied that Maximus wow. is Lucius's father. And I was thinking, I was sitting that, there, I was I've, like, I don't think you get that. I do I've not think it's heavily movie. implied. I saw that movie in theaters when it came out, and mm -hmm. I've probably seen it over mm -hmm. 10 times since. Yeah, it's well, a sure. run. And I watched it again, like, within the last year and a half, I would say. Yeah. And I never picked up on that. It's mm -hmm. also that, like, they bond over both their innocent children, possibly. One di dying, and then right. one almost going to die. Right. She also had, a, like, a man. He had a wife. So, like, their conversations were like, we both stood for the same thing, but now my family's dead. Dead. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, at yeah. what point over their dead families did they have sex? Well, I think, I well, before. It was before. She, yeah, because he had been a, a general in the army, yeah. so he would have been around her a lot. And I think it's implied that he had no idea that he but was they never, his father. In those conversations in the first movie, never appeared that they had had sex well, in the past. Well, right. But like, he, Lucius is also very important because he's supposed to be in the line for Rome. Yeah. Uh, yeah for yeah, Roman right, emperor. Right. So, of course, she wouldn't reveal that she had him out of wedlock with someone. I, you know, right, I, yeah. I don't know all the rules for Rome. It feels like when J.K. Rowling 
Fallon was like, Dumbledore's gay yeah, uh, yeah, on Twitter. Because like, I'm like, I guess you can't. Yeah, you created this character. You can just tweet this out, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like how I felt with Gladiator 2. Was I was like, yeah, you can oh, say this because you, you made it. Yeah. And no one ever asked it in the first movie. No yeah, one, None right. of us asked this. And it's historical <laughs> fiction, right? Marcus Aurelius from the first movie, a very real emperor. Yes. And they even bring, someone in this movie was like, I read his meditations, which anyone can read. They're very fascinating. <laughs> you should read them. They're pretty fascinating. I don't stuff. know if I want to. No, it's kind of interesting to see someone's opinion is it like perverse? How the world, no, no, like how how yeah, world how uh, politics society, worked, yeah. you know, two thousand years ago, and it's still kind of applicable. Today. I'm just not a Rome girl. That's fine. That <laughs> is fine. And I will say, Ridley Scott really wanted Rome to work. Yeah, you this and man. the boys. <laughs> Listen, Rome's fascinating. Its history is fascinating, mm. but you know, it's it was a corrupt place run by corrupt people. So it goes. Uh, <laughs> that's never not been the case in in society. Now. Uh, it, it is so clear in this movie that really this guy's like, man, if only there'd been one good guy in Rome, <laughs> yeah. boys, we'd be eating good. And that, <laughs> but it's like, that's not the case. Uh, you know, it was a, a, an empire, it was a war state. Yeah, it gobbled yeah. up smaller countries and destroyed them. And know? that one good guy is someone who's trying to take uh, yeah, yeah. take lessons from uh, this guy and by holding seeds and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I'm going to hold some seeds. And this movie's so wild. Yeah, and, yeah what, are, what, are you, what does everyone think about this movie? Yeah, I think like all the you know visual direction is like really fun like mm -hmm. i think the fight scenes mostly like work there's some like cgi stuff that we can get into we talked a little bit off screen and some logic problems but i do think it was like cool to see this i mean the fight between uh pedro pascal's character and uh paul mescal's character um in is really well done I yeah think. and i had a, a great time seeing it all uh and hearing it all obviously in the theater too yeah um but yeah as a movie it like Especially seeing the first Gladiator so close. Like, the first Gladiator, like, makes so much sense where it's like, this is a revenge story. Right. Very simple. It's, yes, there's yes. some political, like, dressing and things like that, but it is it is very just, it's like, pretty straightforward. straightforward. Yeah, yeah. This becomes really convoluted. Yes. <laughs> it really, really quickly. Does. Not to the point that I was ever confused, but I was like, you don't need this. Like, I just saw a better version of yeah. this movie. As we kind of talked about, uh, we teased in the beginning of the episode, you know, this movie uh, structurally also is very similar to the first film. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, how much do you want to borrow and, and from that? Like, yeah. How much do you want to take from yourself, you know? It's it's very structurally similar. So much so that, like, I think if you hadn't seen the first movie, it would be mm. even more confusing. Because in this movie, when things would happen, you'd be like, oh, that's like when that happened in the first movie. Now that's yeah. happening here. Mm -hmm. And it kind of helps, I think. Yeah. But it, it is kind You need of to watch the first movie to understand yeah. those characters. Yeah, you yeah, would have yeah. just gone in and been like, why I, does this woman matter? <laughs> I mean, we talked to Maud Garrett a little bit about the movie when she was in a couple weeks ago. And even she was like, yeah, I think you needed a little bit more about Paul Mescal's character. I was like, yeah. oh, well, I mean, I get his illusion. But it's like, if you haven't seen the first movie... Yeah. And they don't you read. Not it's known. like, you're like, oh, he really cares this much. It's, it seems like he just right. wants to get to the afterlife. You know, he's just trying to buy a ticket to, to death. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I too, like, it's it's not, I guess spoilers, we'll spoil the movie. You haven't seen it yet. We'll, we'll probably talk about uh, anything you want to. Um, you'll be fine. Yeah. But like, you know, Paul Mescal's character, Ho Honus, what is it? Lucius, Hona? but Hono. Hona. Hona. He meets the Emperors, like, pretty early on in the movie. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he's already in front of the Emperors? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of weird, like, the pacing. And again, yeah, you don't really get a sense of what uh, uh, Macronus wants. Yeah, Denzel Because he's Washington. lying to yeah. other characters, and he's never honest to you until the end. Mm -hmm. You, the audience, mm -hmm. right? And so I never knew what his motivation was. Yeah. Or what he ultimately wanted. And yeah, I think you could have picked any of these characters and just stuck with them and just yes. told that story. Yeah. Like, I would have liked this movie where it's like, if, if it's Gladiator 2, but have uh, Pedro Pascal not playing a general, but playing like a badass gladiator. Mm -hmm. who's yeah. at, he's got everything he wants. Or, he's at the yeah. top and he sees the problems of Rome and he's like, we've got to do something to fix it or something. Yeah. I like the idea that he was, I thought he was going to be the bad guy. And I was like, I would have yeah. rather him been the bad guy uh, and much better than this. Because, uh, yeah. nah. Pedro Pascal's arc in the story isn't that great. It's weird. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm like, it's not that great. I did kind of yeah. like the idea of a guy who's like, hey, I'm committed to Rome. I've done yeah. all this work. I've worked my way up in the military, and I'm kind of burnt out by it. Yeah. We're just churning and burning. We're eating up these states. We're not providing for them. 
Yeah. You know, I'm watching, we're killing all these people for no reason. Like, what's the point? I mean, mm. in similar ways, it is almost like a, like, what if, you know, uh, Commodus in the first movie hadn't killed his father, right? Like, what if, yes. yeah. what if, like, Russell Crowe's character got what he wanted? He's like, hey, I just want some time to chill with my family. Like, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Like, we've yeah. done all this conquering. Like, can I just do that, you know? But now you, we see what the time that he gets to come back, like, is, like, doing to him where it's like, no, we don't. Why are we doing this? Why right, right. Pedro What's Pascal's like, why are we going back out and, and, and yeah. conquering, you know? I just want to stay home yeah. with my wife and hang out in our little courtyard and our bird. Yeah. Two weirdly sighted dogs. Two weird dogs. The dogs that keep whining out of our, nowhere. Our creepy servant who keeps like backing out of the, I, um, the shot. Weirdly. Yeah. I, I think 16 years was not enough time. No, it did seem uh, very it, close. It should have been a lot further. more to make a significant yeah. draw from. I also think, and maybe they did, maybe they didn't, worked from the bottom of the movie upwards because I, it makes sense to be like, oh, we got to give Paul Mescal's character something to fight for. His wife dies, okay. <laughs> Within the first five minutes of the movie. And it's yeah. like, oh, this woman's a warrior, just like him. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. And then, but like out of the 200 people, Pedro Pascal looks at her and goes, kill her! <laughs> Dude, that was. <laughs> I made no Ooh. sense. He had he no goes, connection. That one. Yeah, he says <laughs> that one right there. Yeah. Uh, right there. It did feel, yes, I, I totally agree. Like, I was so in, you know, I saw it in IMAX, the opening battle sequence is starting. I'm like, this is badass. This yeah. is great. And as soon as they got over the wall, it became so small yes. and weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, why are they all so close together? And I was like, I was like, they're already meeting right yeah. now. These two yeah. characters are like meeting right now. And then they you still can't tell where people are. Mm-hmm. And then he falls over the wall and immediately finds his dead wife in the water. And you're yeah. like, yeah. What? what? How is it so close together? I they're dragging the bodies out of the water like right yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. okay, so who won? And I'm like, okay, it's them. <laughs> Shit, I was I was so confused at some points, but that that point to the wife exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. made me so mad. I was because I was like, he doesn't know who Paul Mescal is. Yeah, he has no yeah, connect. Yeah. Does no. not know that they're married. Fair, but for some reason, him, so points gonna... directly. <laughs> No, I did love, again, spoilers. Uh, I did love his death scene. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Pedro Pascal's with all the arrows were just like. <laughs> it was giving. Oh. They like was, fall sideways. Yeah, like, that oh. was that was adorable. Not the same at all, but just because you're in an arena, 1v1, you get murdered in front of a million people. Yeah. I was like, this is Game of Thrones all over again. Oh, yeah. uh, sure. Less of a speech, but still the same dance of like, I'm doing this for honor. Yeah. And I was yes. like, this is exactly how he died in Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. I like how he was like, hello, his, you know, he's like, has to fight his own men, you know what I mean? Dude, he's I like, know, that's hello. Really oh, they're like, hey, buddy, and he just yeah. immediately starts like, General. oh, you're dead. You're dead. They, <laughs> can't, they can't do the same thing as last time with Quintus or whatever his name was, <sighs> yeah. who, uh, if you remember, yeah, if you remember the first movie, that man was not on their side until the yeah. very last minute right. when he was like, oh, in case uh, Russell Crowe wins, I need to make sure I'm on the right side <laughs> yeah, of history. Yeah. <laughs> Sheath your swords. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sheath your swords. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on the topic <laughs> of uh, the confusing action scenes, uh, we got to talk about these sharks. The sharks. Uh, there's this in the trailers. It's been teased. It's going to be there was this naval like yes. faux naval battle. Naval battle in the Colosseum. Filled the Colosseum with water. Uh, brought some like uh, battle war like mini warships in. Mm. That happened. That was a real thing. That was a real thing in history. They could flood the Colosseum mm-hmm. and they would do like naval battles in the Colosseum. But Adorable. They're sharks. The sharks are wild. <laughs> they're sharks. And this movie leans heavily on animals being villains. Yes. Or being uh, antagonists. Right. And Mexico. that's fine. You know, if you remember the first movie, there was a tiger that yeah, was brought in tiger. famously. Yeah. Tiger shows up in this movie in a cage, a cute little cameo when they were running around. Put yeah. that Indeed. tiger, the tiger? In the Also, he runs by. They they show dogs in cages mm-hmm. at least twice. Yeah, check off dogs that don't, never get to go off, which really annoyed Dude, me. Maybe because well, I thought during the final right? battle sequence they'd release the dogs yeah, and the dogs would attack like true. the Praetorian Guard. Yeah, nope, doesn't happen. I mean that tiger scene in the first movie is great. Like I don't I don't think there's any good way to justify them having sharks. <laughs> no, I don't no, think they had I, the ability to get the I, shark out of the, the water, ocean. Keep it hungry. Like, where do you put it? Do they have salt? I mean, you you asked this in the beginning, right? You're like, I asked this in our meeting this morning. I was like, I just need to know the logistics of taking that share. That the, I I'll, I'll give them leeway that maybe maybe the emperor was like, I heard they there were mermaids. The shark Go that get this. Day. They caught the shark that no, day. No, no, they must have had it. Well, right, they can't just, take it. you keep it tied up, uh, close enough to shore. Tied up, <laughs> like you know, nets, nets. They use nets, they nets. so okay, they have okay. a net around it, and it's like only taking like a little bit of that sea yeah, water yeah. that's okay. on the co- the shore, right? And then yeah. that day they take they it bring from it the up shore here. and they bring it in. But they filled the Coliseum with the water yeah. enough where yeah. it can swim in it. You can swim in it. Yep. It's only got to live that day. And the, and it there's more. The there's not. There's more than one shark. There's several sharks. Yeah, there's several sharks that. But again, crocodiles or alligators. And the thing I would have liked an alligator. Yeah, but the thing. 
that they tease throughout the movie is that like they are all the animals that he fights, maybe with the exception of the rhino, are like really hungry, right? Right. Like yes, they have yes. to like starve the baboons or something. They look really yes. gaunt, and you can tell. I think that happens in the first movie with the tigers too. But it's like, how are you keeping a shark that hungry that when you move the shark, it's not gonna eat you? I'll tell you right. And then you get it into the coliseum. Quick answer, real quick. You know damn well the writers and really Scott said we don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the sharks we don't give that. a fuck. We want a rhino and sharks. Yeah. Like if if they didn't, if it was not a Roman movie, he would have put guns on top of the shark's head. Yeah. Like he would have tied a cannon to each of them or something oh, like some cool. James Bond shit. That he wanted those sharks so bad because yeah. again. Crocodile or alligator makes much more. Yeah, makes I, I, this makes more sense. sense. He went. He said no. Yeah. Yeah. I want sharks in water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say I did. You know, we're we're being hard on the movie. I think just because it, it's a little confusing and it's yeah. a little muddled. It does feel. It reminded me of Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, where it was like. And so that Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice feels like four scripts yes. that they yeah. took what they liked and put them in. This but we expect feels like that, that too. with Beetlejuice. I don't yeah, expect yeah. that. Like, I will say, it was I'll, like Ridley couldn't decide yeah. which avenue to go. I'll play down. the hard ass on this for sure because uh, my roommate was like zero. Uh, absolutely, the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> my, he was. I think. Well, I think the problem also is is that we all rewatched the first, first movie, yeah. which did really not good. help the case of the second movie. No, the first movie. one holds up pretty well. Yeah, and that's why I was like, we he was he had to compare it, and he was like, I can't believe they didn't even do the same vibe as the first movie. Yeah. Like, there was not practicals, there was nothing, like, stunt heavy, there was no family mention, there was just this. <laughs> like, you even mentioned, like, the doctor that's always like this. I'm like, they the didn't doctor, get into him. The doctor in the Coliseum, like, every time we see him, he's just doing the same and thing. It's also crazy, like, that... Eventually, Paul Mescal's character refers to him as like, "Hey, you're my brother," and it's yeah. like, you guys are just like literally just also, smoking we okay. opium together. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, fucking get high. So, so not, that might be the most realistic. Thing. Yeah, yeah, honestly, true, out of that true. entire okay. movie, okay. hey man, you're my brother. Saying. You know what I mean? I do it. Let me, let me <laughs> hit that <laughs> shit again. You want to? You want to turn it? I do either for you, man. I didn't need it to be exactly like the first movie, but I love that in the first movie, even though he was a general and people knew him, it took a minute to warm up to the other slaves. Like yes, they weren't yeah, immediately yeah. like Russell Crowe's a homie. This, as soon as they saw him bite the like. Like arm of that baboon, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were like, Ooh. Yeah. they were like, we're all buddies now, smoking opium, hanging they out. They gave him one hard time at once, yeah, but one, not really. One, not even. No one knocked his bread he away. He laughed. He laughed like, with yeah. that dark voice of his. He went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, I needed subtitles for this. Movie. I needed subtitles for like, this movie. Hey, baby, also, hey. I'm not saying do it. I'm not saying do it. But if Austin Butler was playing his car, oh, his Austin Butler would have killed it. I, I think yeah, he would have. I think he would have done it really. Good. The casting was yeah. again. Maybe I don't think the casting was bad though. Actually, no, I, no, I, yeah. no. Cool, I'm but... saying I think I'm playing the bad card. Okay, where sure. I was like, I don't like any of this casting except what? for Pe Pedro. I think was the best part. I, I think Pedro was amazing to me. But I okay. also don't think it's hard for him to play this character. Like he, no, but he he's did really good. He felt like an actor from the 19th. Yeah, and it felt different than a lot of his roles. His roles are always like he's either having having to defend everybody oh, or just yeah. like I guess I'll do this yeah. this is a movie where he's like I'm leading I'm charging yes. I'm confident and he's, I was like this he's is not different. the main hero and he's not the main yes, villain 100%. he's just like there and maybe that's why he was like I need to act my ass off for this yeah. I yeah, understand where the twins were coming this is just really quick sorry I understand where the twins are coming from I just think there were other car other actors that would have played that like silliness not campy but like Very silliness campy. like they're not campy enough. They're not it was yeah, it I was agree. them playing I teenagers, yeah. and I was like, no, I want men that are in Rome, mm. and you can still be boys that are men in Rome, and playing just like crazy, ridiculous, upper like everything's a joke to you. You have all the money. You're an right, emperor. Right. Play that. Don't play like a teenager that's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think but, they could have committed yeah. harder, and I think a lot of that yeah. confusion comes with like how old are they exactly, yeah. and yeah. the actor's real age, and then how they look, because they already have this makeup oh, on. Oh yeah, they're supposed to look like, a... they said that in and an interview. they are actual twins? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're fraternal yeah. twins yeah, in the in movie. The movie yes. They said in an interview they looked at Beavis and Butthead as like uh, a pointer, <laughs> oh which God. I think did not play well to their strength. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that for a Roman movie? But again, even if they're like kids, I'm like, you're still in Rome and you're emperors. You were yeah, trained yeah. to be adults at the age of five. You've seen yeah. horrible things. So I'm like, this should be, all, be fun to you, a joke to you, or at least right. play, I don't know. I, this could be Ridley Scott's direction, Ridley Scott's direction for the actors. I just yeah. didn't like that he took. I do think some of that comes through in the first scene where uh, you were, um, Kevin, uh, Paul Mescal is like, uh, fighting in front of them at the party scene. Where oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Where it's and he's like, it's just going to be a fist fight. And then um, the uh, one of the, the emperor who's is like, no, bring out the swords. Yeah, I want yeah. swords. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, now they're, Cara, now they're fighting for the Cara, death. Cara, I agree. I think one yeah, of the Cara swords. Cara. But you like yeah. Denzel. 
So yeah, that was the, the next performance we we're going to get it into. Yeah. Denzel watched him play um, Macrinus. Macrinus. I keep Say I know Master of Ceremonies. Macrinus. Macrinus. Marcus? Macrinus. <laughs> this is just Marcus without uh, take out the I and the yeah. N and it's Marcus. I think it's one of those interesting things where like I his performance is also very different from everyone, yes. which also like again these, this wide ranging variety of performances, right? Where you have Denzel um, doing his thing, you have the two emperors uh, who are, are camp, but maybe not camp enough, and then you have Paul, Pedro, and um, Connie Nielsen who are just like a, a lot more like serious. I feel like a lot darker. They're playing stoic. They're playing yeah. stoic. Yeah. So the, this like diversion of, of energies and, and what you're bringing to the t um, movie is like really interesting. Denzel specifically. Kind of, li I liked what you were saying, where it's like you can't quite figure him out. He's like kind of playing this weird game, but it is like very different than everybody else. You yeah, know? I mean, he, he's not putting on an accent, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the actors are, I assume, using also their pretty much standard normal well, Paul's regular doing accents. English. Paul's he's doing, doing yeah, normal yeah. American. Yeah, yeah, right? but I but think it, he's having a hard time. I think doing Denzel it. just kind of yeah. stands out because he just sounds so much like yeah. Denzel Washington in a normal. I, movie. I do like how he's he has... making very unique choices with pronunciation yeah. and words. They kind of give him the out really early on when you meet his character and he goes, "What language do you speak? I speak them all." And it's yeah. like, oh, I was that's like, why. well, I was like, <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. And yeah. then he never did. He never. He was playing. Well, I guess Denzel so at that the made age me of think, sixty-two. Like, is this like Shogun, where when you're hearing English, it's actually Latin? It's Latin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because in Shogun, when you hear English, it's Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's so right. So it's like yeah. this. This also threw me when they go into Maximus's tomb and on the wall in English, it says what we do in life. Echoes well, it's actually yeah. in Latin. <laughs> yeah. Well, because <laughs> but when they went in loose when. When Lucilla goes into Lucius's bedroom mm -hmm. and the Virgil is on the ceiling, was that in English or was that in Latin? It the was Virgil he in English, oh, but that was it English was too? with like the certain letters are, are different. Are instead yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. know. It just felt more. weird. Just put it in Latin. Yeah, it would have yeah, hit harder. Kind of I don't think that, they were like. Hey, no, no, no. Also, that rusty old armor wouldn't have been great okay. to put on. Uh, he didn't wear the shoulder pads. Yeah. Oh god. He didn't wear the shoulder. He just put on the chest piece. He didn't put on, on the shoulder pads. pads. He didn't man. know. Come on, your he dad's didn't, His outfit. dad didn't tell him. His dad didn't tell him. I did like how he was not excited to see his mom at all. No, and yeah. I, get him I out thought of that him. was going to be like a tearful sequence, this, and it was like, I don't know you, but it's a gladiator. Dead. It's a gladiator theme of like, these prisoners do not want you up in their no. business. Like, as soon as she came down there, he was like, also, come get her anyone out Anyone can go visit him in the prison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently it's really easy now. But, and that part is so confusing because you're yeah. like, so, uh, to, I guess to finally join the, the spoiler part of it, how Paul Mescal's character is playing Lucius from the first film, All Grown Up, right. they send him away because they're afraid that, uh, in a flashback scene that we see, they redo the ending of Gladiator. Yeah, which was cute. We see uh, him being sent away because- Oh, it was really nice. I loved it. Yeah, his mom is afraid that um, he's going to get killed because there's going to be too much targets on them on uh, for and now that the Emperor's dead. Yeah, because he would be in the line of succession. Yes. And they were like, some men are going to try and kill you so that they can take mm -hmm. over. But when he's in, you know, wherever he is at, and the Roman soldiers are like, have you seen this boy? How does he know that they're not there to bring him back to Rome? <laughs> you that's, know? A, that's a great point. He just went for he a run. He did just it, run. <laughs> I guess maybe because it was the Praetorian Guard and he knows that. But this is a great I point. I mean, she I mean, can't leave. Like, him, him just disappearing means they got a whole other problem, right? They, well, because they, they think gonna he's... going to install someone else. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. He's dead. Exactly. And they think he's dead. But and then so it's mom's like... just like, I'm going to get this figured out. Don't worry. And then I'll come get you. Yeah. And then, and then she never dies. There's not, yeah. And then he moves to Namibia, which was mm -hmm. like a free uh, city on uh, in northern Africa. It was yeah. one of the, you know, it eventually fell to Rome. Rome came for most of the people on its borders as it continued to grow, till it till it ran into the the Germanic tribes. They proved to be a, a big difficulty, and mm. Rome fell eventually. But but yeah, uh, it was just yeah. confusing. <laughs> it was confusing, and so I guess, uh, anyways, to, to bring him back to Denzel somehow. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's great, and he's doing these he's, big yeah. things. But it does feel like it doesn't fit with the rest of the movie. Yeah, I think, I think, I think there's, so. and that's I think that's probably only my not my only. I have a lot of negatives. Yeah. I'm also taking the hard stance that I don't like this movie, which is not act full true. I just. Hmm. I would never watch it again. I, I think, guarantee that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think if, if you have any interest in this movie, go see it in a movie theater with yeah. big screen, big sound. Mm -hmm. I would not want to watch this movie at home again. I, I I love the idea that he's different than everyone else because he's just so cultured and that he's different. He's been everywhere. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to see it. I don't want to yeah. see Denzel playing Denzel. I, I think our excuse was that like he's been everywhere. That's why he's like... 
a 90s black man. And I'm like, no, I wanted to be like something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, it was also weird too, because it was like, they didn't have any other characters really that weren't white. Like uh, uh, yeah. in kind of the upper echelon yeah. of Roman society, it's like you could have like worked it in more to kind of show how he could like, have had a cool story. Yeah, like a cooler how cool. story. And then yeah. his uh, down spiral was just like so quick. Because he's kind of playing the Oliver Reed character at first mm. from the first movie, mm -hmm. you know, who who Maximus runs into as he's first yeah. becoming a gladiator, and so you feel like Denzel's filling that role, and then it turns out to be something completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what was so dis disjarring about it because. He, he sees, at first you think he already owns Paul Mescal, but he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. And he's like, he's I'll buy like him. And you're like, oh, I thought he was yours. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know who you are, sir. And then it's like, then he's meeting him and he's nice to him and then he's yeah. mean to him. And you're like, I don't know. And then they're with the emperors. It's, you're like, yeah. how did we get here already? Mm -hmm. so it's where they have that fake out escape, uh, which they had in the first movie where it changed. Like, oh, is he going to be like the first right. guy that helps him escape? Or is he going to be the one that traps him? And he was the one that traps him. Also, when, they, <laughs> when they're trying to break out Paul Mescal in the beginning, uh, or early on in the movie, when Acacius is trying to get him out, Pedro Pascal, mm -hmm. and the guys are hiding... <laughs> And they shoot all the other soldiers, yeah. and they just leave Pedro Pascal. Do you think that was on accident? Or I like, think it was on accident. I think it was, it was on like, happening. oh, we have to kill all these guys, and they're like, they're so good at close range <laughs> bow and arrow that they were like, just don't kill. Everyone was wearing a cloak. Yeah. Also, <laughs> listen, if it's nighttime in Rome and there's fifty guys going down the street all in black cloaks, something's up. Something's guys. up. Yeah. You're not being conspicuous. <laughs> You're being very conspicuous. You're not being inconspicuous. Yeah. This do smaller groups. It's and fine. I immediately thought of House of the Dragon and anytime uh, Matt Smith oh, puts on a yeah, cloak and it's like, he's going to kill somebody. Have you noticed this There was like cloak? 50 guys going down the street in cloaks. Yeah. And they got one guy stuff. guarding the Coliseum and he let him right in. Wild <laughs> stuff. Also, did you notice, when's the last time you went to a movie mm -hmm. and it started with a full title and credit sequence. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. That showed director, writers, actors, producers. I mean, it has been, I feel like most movies now, the title comes They're at not. the end of the movie, right? The 100%, if they do it at the beginning, the beginning, it's for like an artistic approach. This was wild. I was like, yeah. I, it was still going on. I was like, I can't believe how That was Ridley was Scott being like, put that in there. And also after seeing the first movie, I was like, oh, they chose the key moments. Yeah. The yeah. key moments. They, you saw it with this weird like painted effect. But that was, was my like, favorite part. But I liked it, but it also was like, it was like they put an Instagram filter on it instead of like, oh, like if they'd so actually they made, that way, like yeah. made the release, do you know like how that would have been cool. Do you know how think. much that monkey budget was? To Not make enough. Those a hey, lot. first <laughs> counsel Donda, shout out. Shout out. <laughs> first count, first counselor Don, the Donda? The Dondas? The Dondas? Dondas? Right? Dondas. The little monkey. Little monkey? Oh. Little monkey, oh. little monkey oh. should have been in the movie that, early. Oh, that little monkey. That also, well, I, that was the worst kind of idea to be like, here's a bunch of vicious apes and here's a tiny real yeah. monkey. Because then I'm constantly looking at this real, you cut from the monkeys biting the neck of a, a man and then I see the little monkey that's real. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I want that little yeah, monkey. Yeah, I didn't like the, the like, Baboons or mandrels yeah. they were fighting. Yeah. I didn't like that. Didn't I didn't like it. Right. It makes sense though to like why choose those ones because they're manic and there's a, yeah, yeah, a sure, lot of sure. them and they are violent. And you don't want to kill off, yeah. well, I guess I'll, people die. Because I was like, you don't want to have men fighting men because you're going to kill off a bunch of your men you need to sure. have later, but. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They should have just like threw the go... people from the, the the audience out into the middle of the middle of the fight when they turned those uh, arrows yeah. on the audience. I was like, damn, how do you not run into some like, I was, was like, laughing like, my... They yeah, probably pulled back, and I'm like... <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm gonna go to the popcorn stand. Uh, anyone need anything? I'm just Once gonna... they turned like, on me, I would have been like, yeah, cause they were, they were like, they were like, I'm holding, I'm, hold I'm holding this box of kids. And they're like, I'm gonna give a speech, and they're like, oh fuck, oh, put this speech up, please. It was, it was. They were pulled full back. Point. There was one person in the audience standing right yeah. there, and he's just like. <laughs> Like, you know it's Adam, he's like, There oh, was like fuck. eight of them all <laughs> skin. What are you gonna do, shoot one person up in the fucking face? When they do the first, when they the first like big Coliseum moment and the emperors are like, Casey, you gotta say something. He walks up and he's like, I just wanna say uh, thanks everybody for coming out. <laughs> Who could hear this guy? Who could hear this guy? He's just like, I just think that, you know, it's, it takes a lot of bravery to be a, a gladiator. I, I hope we're all that brave. <laughs> Everyone's clapping. No one heard that shit. We, uh, subtitles project, subtitles was needed for how silent the people were, but also they were like mumbling a lot of the <laughs> yeah. times. It was pissing me off. I was like, I can't, I don't know what they're saying. Is that a little Roman laugh, Mike? Yeah. You know? Yeah, get he something. Said, uh, get a little, I hope like, everybody a wants to be a gladiator one day. Everyone, I hope y'all show as much bravery as these 
gladiators. That's all. And also, you much. think those people in the and audience? They're like a case. Those Go people in the audience would <laughs> not have been calm. They were throwing tomato yeah. and bread the first in the first movie. They would have been like, "Spring up, bitch!" Like, <laughs> we heard there's gonna be sharks. Get the sharks out here. Get those. My sharks. uncle had to take a shark from the the, the shore all the way across and ate him. Oh the bears are off. We eat sharks. Was sharks. it the, now? I'm getting the two movies confused. Was it this movie? What the guy killed? Oh yeah. As soon as like Pedro's character died, everyone was like still in the audience. They were like, "Whoa." Yeah, didn't, think yeah. were, well, didn't think you were gonna kill our guy. Didn't think you were gonna kill our general. I mean, that's why it's great when Paige, uh, when Paul's just like, yeah, like if when they kill him, like what is if his life means nothing? What is your guy's? The archers yeah, yeah, turned like, on them immediately. Yeah, he said, "They're like, oh man, I only got five arrows. There's a lot I of people here. There's a six people over here. <laughs> the six I can't pull it back this far." <laughs> I will say on a last note. Um, so we were talking about Denzel's story and like how parts of it were maybe a little confusing. Maybe some of the scenes didn't uh, cut quite well. We were talking about that a little bit off screen. Uh, one of the stories about this movie, uh, Rami, uh, actress in Moon Knight, uh, mm. Scarlet Scarab actress Mae Kalamaui, was originally cast uh, in a, uh, a major role for Gladiator 2, or at least a role that you know Ridley Scott wanted to do a like really heavy search for this. Uh, per Deadline, he was saying that um, you know given the importance of this character to the story, Scott wanted a thorough search and following multiple auditions, Kalamaui land of the park uh she's was cut from the film uh there's kind of you know a lot of reasons uh that are out there why there's no definitive thing a lot of you know speculation um it, it sucks you know when an actress yeah. very talented is cut from a story like that we were talking about how manny jacinto was cut from uh top gun maverick yeah he's you know? like barely in the movie and I, yeah. you said you could you could see you this actor see, you can see her in the scenes with denzel and like anytime he's with his family okay. you know she's in the background uh she is at the party where they are um that we talked about where paul uh miska has to fight with the swords against the other barbarian yeah um yeah i, I think that you know i was trying to watching this very long movie thinking about where, what storyline which she contributed to. Yeah. It does feel like some of the confusion, some of the stuff we've talked about, I initially was like, maybe she was talking to Lucius a little bit more. Maybe she was like, the, uh, he would have been like, she would have been some type of love interest for him, you know, to move on from his wife or something. But I was like, ah, that doesn't quite feel right. You know, it, it feels like he's very dedicated to, yeah. you know, this vision. And then it was like, oh, maybe she uh, was doing something with, um, you know, Macronis and like trying to help him achieve this plan or push against you know his like machinations and stuff yeah like. i think that makes the most sense that he would have been she would have been helping her father mm -hmm. yeah because he would have been able to like kind of indoctrinate her from birth and be like look what the romans have taken from us look what they've done i'm gonna get in on the inside and yeah. take this place over uh yeah i was annoyed at the end when it was like the two armies coming to me i was like oh we're gonna get one more good battle out of this yeah. movie and then it was like no let's let nope. these two guys cut that hand muck oh. it out yeah so much like I think Ridley went a little heavy on the like CG violence. Not that I want like real violence, but it was like right. overly CG when it didn't need to be. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. And the first movie is so practical. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It feels a lot more practical. Like when, you know, when uh, Commodus stabs Maximus right before the thing, mm -hmm. yeah. you don't see a lot of blood. Or it was just like, it's very or, impactful because you're like, they have to fight and he just got stabbed and yeah. that was going to be hurt. Or it's even really when hot. he like it falls on the ground, uses the axe to shove into that man's yes, foot. Yes, yeah. I'm like, simple. Easy. We understand yeah, the pain. Yeah. This was like I don't need to see freaking Denzel Washington machete this boy's head off and not work for the first couple of swings. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just like sawing, and yeah. I was like, was and like the angle like... of the camera turned, so I was like, oh, they want us to get like a horror element yeah, yeah. out of this. Yeah. But I think not blood hitting. maybe splashed on the camera too. Yeah. I feel like it's I always just, see uh, that yeah. now. It's just not hitting. Joke. That and but the... yeah, with his hand and it gets cut off. And, and he like, goes, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, falls I'm slowly this. underneath the water. I think like it did like a little squirt too. It's a flesh wound. It's a flesh wound. Cut my arm off! And the, it's such a fun... That scene of his death was so funny because he's just yeah. looking directly at the camera. Go, also, like... <laughs> slowly fading again, into and the water. Paul Mescal gives a speech. It's like, hey, guys, I think Rome might work if we all work together. He's whispering. You guys in the back can't hear this. <laughs> They're here for a fight. They're like, They're we still fight. got the flags up. We're, We're like, We're still taking the city. Like, yeah. So where? Are we going in there or what? <laughs> I owe a lot of money to a guy. I was going to go kill him. I thought it was like the purge. Paul's going... You know, you know, you may not know me. Is it really a strange? I'm gonna call myself the Prince of Rome. Nobody calls you that, buddy. <laughs> Nobody called you the Prince of Rome. My wife's dead. <laughs> he pointed at her and yeah. killed her with an arrow. Yeah, yeah. So many women died also, by arrows. Also, Roman soldiers. You let this guy just ride it, this apothecary. This guy, high as hell, just rode into camp. No one is stopped he him. It for yeah, free? No is it walked for free? right up to the general, and the general the was guy. like, I know this ring. Yeah. I will say, I did like that line he had that he was like, most people out there die to disease and infection yeah, than yeah. being in that damn arena. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's true. Every person out there has yeah. died probably from an infection. Sitting on those benches will give you an infection. 
<laughs> also, yeah, all the all the women in the movie dying from arrows. Like Paul Mescal, his character is just like, oh, fuck. yeah. Uh, first thing, no when I take over Rome, life. no yeah. arrows. No women. All <laughs> women out of the, out of the kingdom. Proclamation number one: Burn the arrows. <laughs> no more arrows. Arrows will be soft tipped from now on. Soft tipped. Wood only, and it you cannot show. You have right. to throw it with your what hands. What do we learn about wood? Even sharpened wood can pierce. That's oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, oh, he yeah, with the wooden, wooden yeah, with the wood, yeah. Oh, that like, little motherfucker was like, you got to defend your mom, but you get this wooden sword. I was like, bitch, <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> That was a wild setup, too. I was like, this guy's not going to be able to fight off all these kids. Oh, yeah, no way. They didn't really show. Did anyone else get killed? I mean, the one senator who came back from the first movie mm-hmm. with, the, with the white, go- yeah, white beard, brackets. he got killed. Yes, he got killed. But did any of those other women on the cart or anything get killed? Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder I if they made it. Yeah, no, no, the, I, think I guess just two home. handmaidens or something, right? Yeah, there's oh, some wait. women. Yeah. I assumed it was the wives of some of the senators oh, or something yeah, like that. that. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe it was Lucilla's. To be fair, he was aiming directly for her. He didn't yeah, care about yeah. the other two. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, I guess... What a wild film, guy. To, yeah, to put a cap on it, Gladiator 2 certainly entertaining. <laughs> Definitely has more questions than answers. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first film, hey, if you haven't ever seen Gladiator, watch that, and then maybe wait... I don't know. What, 16 20, years. It was 16 years, so watch the second one. Um, that's it for us today. Thanks again to Magic Mind for sponsoring today's episode of The Break Room. Go to magicmind.com slash The Break Room and use code The Break Room 20 to get up to 48% off your first subscription for the next 10 days or 20% off a one time purchase. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to The Break Room channel on YouTube. We've been doing this thing at the beginning of videos where we say we're almost at 100K subscribers. Forgot to do it today, but we're almost at 100K. So if you're still we're watching, so give us a give us a little sub. Hey, when you're at Thanksgiving, arguing with your family, yes, take a break and make them all subscribe to the break room, and then get back to the yeah. Fun. Say we'll play this fun game. Don't yeah. show them Gladiator. They'll find a reason to use no. that in today's politics. No, yeah, maybe some of your problematic uncles will enjoy Gladiator oh too in politics. Oh yeah, they um they'll, they'll be out there. They're like, the you should have said, you should have. We could have had it all in Rome. It could have worked. We could have had Rome. We could have had a bunch great. of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of hairless baboons fighting each other. Could have had sharks. Could have had sharks. <laughs> they always forget the syphilis. They always forget the syphilis. That stayed. That was there. That, stuck around, that was rampant. Yeah. So was syphilis, rampant. Yeah, that was rampant. Syphilis is really what ran Rome, huh? A syphilis true. ran Rome, yeah. 100%. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.